Welcome to Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. Now let's join Pastor Cowan and the congregation of Faith is the Victory Church. This is Victorious Living. We've got to get on the same page with God. So God is not in charge of what we speak. God will let you, me, him, her, anybody speak and say what they want to say. But let, let, oh, let, me, let, me give, let me drop a clue. <laughs> Everything you read or see or hear on the news is not necessarily true. Very little truth is seeping through. So God is not in charge of what we speak, but he is responsible for telling us what we should speak. He, he, he is not telling, what, what did I say? God's not in charge of what I speak, we speak, but he's responsible for telling me what I should speak and what words or language he wants me to speak to him in. It's the language of faith. Where do I learn the language of faith? Come on, talk to me. Where do I learn this language? Amen. How can I increase my vocabulary? By reading. You know, in the natural, if you just read, you will increase your vocabulary. Amen. In the natural, you know, you'll learn to say them old big words. <laughs> None of us know what they mean. <laughs> but boy, we love to handle them big words. But, but reading increases your vocabulary. Amen. You bring that up to the level with God and reading his word Amen. increases our vocabulary. And come to church, you know, in, in years past, we come to church singing, you know, let me have a little talk with Jesus. Let me tell him all about our troubles. For, that's all I know of that song. <laughs> so I tell him, why do you want to tell him your troubles? As if he didn't know. He knew your troubles before you ever got to your troubles. but we want to tell him. I'm going to preach hard till I get an amen from everybody. Why would we want to tell him our troubles when he's trying to tell me the answer? But Jesus said it, if any man have ears to hear, If any man have ears to hear, meaning there are some people who do not have ears to hear. Amen. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Now notice what he said, let him hear. He, he doesn't say let the prophet, let the apostle, let him hear. He doesn't say let the, let, let the prophet, apostle prophet, hear for him. They're responsible for giving to him or her words that we should speak, but they, they, they can't hear for us. We have to hear for ourselves. Let him hear. So what I've got to do, I've got to make a decision. Who do I want to hear? Do I want to hear God? Do I want to hear the devil? Do I want to hear everybody else? No. I want to hear God. And that's enough to take up my time. Amen. Amen. So God is instructing on how to create a better life here on the earth. God is trying to instruct us for a better life. 
how to acquire, achieve a better life. I mean, it's in favor of a better life. You may have it good, but God can make it gooder. He can make it better. He's instructing us on how to, how to acquire, gain, and climb, you know, to a better life. Because this life is not just all about us. We're here in league with one another in the body of Christ to help one another. To have a better life that God has for us. Amen. Amen. So God is not in charge of what we speak, but he is responsible for telling us what we should speak and what words or language that he wants his people to speak. God is instructing on how to create a better life here on earth. God's word is a creative force. Wow. Boy, when we, when we get a hold of that statement right there, God's words are creative. If you don't believe it, go back to Genesis chapter one. Isn't that right? Go back to Genesis chapter one. What does it say? Say it again. And what? What did God said? God said, let there be. And God said, let there be. And God said, let there be. And God said, let there be. There's 19 times. And God said, 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 indicating to me what we say is going to create something. Amen. What we say are, is going to create something. Amen. So what do we want to create? See, we're talking to people way out yonder, but we, you know, we're here. What, what is it that God wants to create in my life? Well, he created the new birth, but I had to say something. I had to say something. I had to believe something. I had to believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. I had to confess him as Lord and then God created something. That's right. He created a new birth. Yeah. He created a new birth. He took away the old and brought the new. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He took away the old life, that, that life that housed death. He took it away and brought something new. He brought me his life. Yeah. Now I have his life. So he, his words create. Now watch this. Let's, let's go into the book of Hebrews just for a moment. Everybody okay? Okay. Let's go to the 10th chapter of the book of Hebrews. God's word is a creative force and he's given it to us to speak so that we become creative where our life is concerned. What are we going to create? We're going to create the will of God for our life. Okay, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. Now we've all learned through the years what, it, what the word just means. The word just here in this, uh, in this uh, verse I just read, the word just means what? Justified. What does justified mean? Justified, I have been justified, meaning I have been put into a right position or place with God. And now I am the righteousness of God. Instead of people saying, I am the righteousness of God, they're so moved by their carnality that they say, Everything but I am in right standing with God. That's right. I am righteous. And so what does Hebrews 10, he said, now the righteous. Amen. Amen. Who are the righteous? Those who have been what? Born again. 
I am the righteous. I am in right standing with God. I am the righteousness of God. I am the just or I have been justified and made righteous with God or made righteous with the righteousness of God in my spirit. And so he said, now, now the just shall live. The word live has a, has a volume of meaning in it. It means live means quality. It means dominion. It means authority. It, ha, it has, it has a, 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 a list of all that is embedded in the word live. The just shall live. The just shall have authority. The just shall have power. The just shall have, and you, you can run it on and on and on. That's what he means when he says the just shall live by the creative power of God. The just shall live by the goodness of God. The just shall live by the power of God. The just shall live by what? And now the, the just shall live by faith. Now watch this. Boy, you could, you could spend probably two and a half weeks on this one verse. But if any man draw back, everybody okay? Okay. If any man draw back, do you know the first place that, that, that a person is going to draw back? Now, I'm not saying you've done it, so don't go out here and say, you know, he said that I was drawing back and I know I ain't. I don't go out here saying that stupid stuff. Do you, know, do you know the first place where a person will draw back is right here. About a half an inch under their nose with their mouth. Is this too hard? Am I, am, am I too hard? You want a little, what's that, what's that, what's that, what? What's that we feed babies when they're little bit? What? Who said something? What? You do, <laughs> you do have children. <laughs> she said, yeah, but they're old. <laughs> pa pablum? Pablum. Pa do you want pablum or do we want the meat? What do we want? What do you want? You want the meat, strong meat, yeah. amen. Okay, I mean, we, we don't want to beat anybody over the head, but you, you know, I mean, I wouldn't want some, the rest of the slap, you know, take a steak and slap it over my head before they cook it and before I could eat it. <laughs> so we don't want to do that. But now watch this, watch, watch what he said. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, if any man is not speaking the language of God, they're drawing back. They're drawing away. Their language is drawing them away from God and not taking them to God because they're speaking the wrong things. They're not speaking the language of God. They're not speaking the language of faith. Now, Look what he said. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, if any man takes his words, his mouth, his language, and draws away from God or draws back, God said, my soul shall have no pleasure or no pleasing in the person, but he never says he don't love them. He never says he don't love them. God loves everybody and I cannot make God quit loving me. I can't be bad enough for God to quit loving me, but yet at the same time, there are things he's given me to say his language so that I can draw nigh to God. What does the Bible say? Draw nigh to God. Come on, talk to me. Draw nigh to God. Draw nigh to God and he'll what? He'll run away from you. No, no. What does he say? Draw nigh to God. And he'll draw nigh to you. Now here we say, 
Draw me near, draw me near. We sing that song. That is a song. We've all probably, you know, if you've been to a church that had a hymnal, we've probably all have sung that song. I can't, I'm trying to get the key. It's, it's like I took singing lessons long years ago. I was going to be a great singer. So Luther Drummond, he had taught a, a, a lot of these music quartet people. He had given them voice lessons. So me and my brother and my cousin, we went. And every Monday night, we came all the way over here to Nashville to take singing lessons, voice lessons from Luther Drummond. And so after about four, five, six weeks, I'm sitting on the bench with him. Luther's playing the piano and I'm singing. All of a sudden he quits playing. He said, Mr. Cowan, said, I, I, I really won't hate to tell you this, but I, I think you're wasting your money. <laughs> and he said, I, if I were you, I, I wouldn't come back. <laughs> so in essence, what he told me, you ain't drawing near. <laughs> You ain't drawing near, you, you're, drawing, you're, drawing, you're drawing further away from what you want to be. And so we want, we want to use a language that draws us nearer. So, some of you folks that didn't go to church where they have a hymnal, you hadn't heard some of these songs. And some of you have heard them and adopted them. Okay, I, I'm mailing it. I hope everybody's okay. If they're not, <laughs> I pray it'll hit you this afternoon. Okay, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back my soul, God said I, he would have no pleasure or have no pleasing or not be pleased in him. But we are not of them that draw back. Now, let's all say that together. We are not of those who draw back. See, that's a statement coming out of your mouth that points you in a direction. I will not draw back. So say that, say, let's say it again. I will not draw back. See, that's pointing you. That, that, that's not turning you around. That's, that you are expressing with your words, I will not draw back, indicating you're going to continue to walk forward. Amen. So here he, t he talks about drawing back. He said, we, we are not of those who draw back uh, yeah, unto perdition. Now, now, you know, if you don't know the meaning of the word perdition, <laughs> you, know, you can think a lot of, a lot of stuff, perdition, whoa. The word perdition is the word loss, L-O-S-S. -S. We are not of those who draw back to loss or to losing. What, what, are we, what would we be losing? We'd be losing what's available to us in Christ. He said, we are not of those who draw back to perdition or to loss but of them, we are of them that believe to the saving or the obtaining of a right mind or of the soul. We also know that the word just is referring to those who have been declared. We, we talked about in right standing with God. The just shall have life eternal or spiritual life as well as a blessed life in this natural world. See, God wants to bless us people. God wants to bless us. And you know, don't pay any attention to these people saying, well, you know, that prosperity message is of the devil. I mean, don't pay any attention to people who don't know what they're talking about. And they're just expressing an opinion because they don't have what you got. And so we don't want to pay attention to where people who are unbelievers, who do not believe, we want to pay attention to what we believe. We want to pay attention to what God said. Amen. We want to pay attention to the language that we're talking. We, that's who we want to pay attention Amen. to. And so, 
you know, you, I don't know if you hear it or not. I hear it a lot about, you know, well, now, you know, God never promised that you could have more than just what you need. And then they'll quote the scripture. Now, you know, the Bible says that God meets your needs, but he didn't say he meets your wants. And I said, tear the 23rd Psalm out. Amen. Tear that out of the Bible. Can you quote, can, can you quote the, first, the first sentence of the 23rd Psalm? The Lord is my shepherd and I'm hungry and I'm cold and I ain't got enough. No, what does it say? The Lord is my shepherd. Come on, talk to me. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He's the great shepherd of the sheep. We're the sheep and he's the great shepherd of the sheep. And he says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. And the Bible said, if we walk uprightly before God, he will give us the desires of our heart. You know, he, he's not telling you to go out there and rob a bank to get the desires of the, you know, that's not what he's saying or, or to do something like that. He's just simply saying, God will fill your life. He'll fill your life. He'll fill your life with your desires. Amen. And so God wants us to have what he has provided for us. Okay, now let's go a little bit further. Are you in for going just a little bit further? Okay, Hebrews chapter 11, verse six. Hebrews eleven six. but without faith, but without faith, but with no faith, but with no faith language, but with no faith words, it is impossible to pleasure or to please him. You know, and, and folks, listen, probably everybody in here, we, we probably have prayed or talked sometimes, say, Lord, I want to I wanna please you. You know, Father, Lord, you know my heart. I, I want to please you, but they don't know how. Thank you so much for viewing our program with us today. We, we hope that you were blessed by the message that you heard as we were talking about the language of God's kingdom is the language of faith. You know, it'd be like me speaking English and you speaking Spanish. And that's the only language that we knew then, you know, we couldn't talk to one another. We couldn't communicate because we're not on the same page. We're not on the same language. You know, that is so true that God has a language of his kingdom and it is the language of faith. In other words, God doesn't have a language of doubt or our fear. He doesn't have a, a, a language of uh, sickness and disease. If he, he doesn't have that language, but he tells us the, uh, pro he tells us how to solve those things in, in our life. So when I come to God and tell him how bad things are in my life and how all these things that I'm going through. And that, that may be true because people do have bad things that happens. They do go through uh, uh, tough times in life. Nobody's denying that. that that's, a, that's a fact that they do. But yet at the same time, when we talk to God concerning our situation, we want to talk his language. We want to talk faith. We want to talk overcoming. We want to talk the victory. We want to talk about when and why, because that's the language that God uses in the scriptures. And it's not that we are denying that people do not have tough times in their life, do not go through tough times uh, in their life. Uh, they do not deal with difficult situations and circumstances. We're not denying that because we know that is so, but we don't want to talk to God about all of those things. We want to talk to God about who he is, what he has done, and what he has made available to us so that we're able to communicate one with the other because we're talking the language of the kingdom being a language of faith. So in speaking the language of the kingdom, we are on the same page with God. We're talking 
uh, the same language that God speaks to us in. And you know, that's why God calls us more than conquerors. God called us more than conquerors. God in his word said that we, he always causes us to try up in Christ Jesus. So we want to be sure that we're speaking the same language that God speaks to us and that we are speaking that language, which is the language of the kingdom and the language of faith for those who are in the kingdom. So God bless you today. We trust, as I've said, we trust that you were blessed and, and that there was a, something that was said that kind of triggered a thought in you and, and caused you to look at things different perhaps than, than you may have been looking at them. And uh, that's what we want to do. We just want to give you the word and just want to bless your life. If you'd like a uh, copy or a CD or if you'd like a DVD of this program, then if you'll call the number that's on your screen and uh, we'll be glad to send it to you. Postage paid, no charge to you whatsoever. And then you can get us on uh, our website and we'll, we'll, we'll be glad to, uh, to get it out to you because we want to here at Faith is a Victory Church. We want to be a blessing to you. And if you don't have a home church, then I, I would just welcome you to come visit with us, see how you like us, see, see what we do, see, uh, uh, hear what we preach and teach. And so we'd love to see you. I want to pray for you before I leave today. Father, I pray for the people. I pray, Lord, that your great peace, that peace that is so supernatural that, that goes beyond own human understanding. I pray that that peace will settle upon the people today. For those today that are in need of health and healing in their bodies, I pray for them today that the anointing of the Holy Spirit will touch their life and will spark healing in their bodies. And Father, we thank you that you are with them, you walk with them, and your desire is to bless them. And we pray that in Jesus' name. Thank you once again for viewing, and we'll be right back with you next time right here on Victorious Living from Faith is the Victory Church, Nashville, Tennessee. You've been watching Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. It's our hope that today's message has ministered to the need you have in your life. If you would like to receive today's message in its entirety, please call 1-800-842-7896. Or if you're in the Nashville area, call 615-226-2145 and ask for the product number on the screen. Visit us online at victoriousliving.org. If you're ever in the Nashville area, come and worship with us. Sundays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. From Pastor Cowan and the Congregation of Faith is the Victory Church, we'll be looking for you next time right here on Victorious Living.